Okay, so welcome everyone. I'm just going to put the agenda in chat and then I'm going to share my screen in a little bit. Ignore the picture of Bill. Um, I'm role playing as Bill today. I'm actually Danny. Um, but yes, it's good to have you all here today. Um, we'll just do a quick round of introductions as one more person enters um, the meeting. A couple more people, okay. Um, but I'm Danny, I'm the field organizer for Bridge the Divide and I am coming here from Barron, Wisconsin today. Um, so Northwest part of Wisconsin, um, but not quite Pierce County where most of um, a lot of the efforts have, have been for PC Grow up to this point. So, um, yeah, who wants to go next? Doug, how about you introduce yourself? Hi. I'm uh, Doug Owens Pike, and I've been involved with the PC Crow back when we were working on fair maps. And um, oh, nice. I've been busy traveling, so I've been out of loop here. I'm, I'm from the middle of nowhere and north of Menominee. <laughs> yes, good to hear. Um, Carolyn, how are you doing today? I'm good. Um, I'm Carolyn Saunders. I live in Osceola, which is north in Polk County, a neighbor to Danny's Barron County. And, um, and I'm the chair of uh, the League of Women Voters that covers three county area, Burnett, Polk, and St. Croix County. Cool, cool. Thank you. Um, Janelle. My name's Janelle Edward Kraus. I'm in St. Croix County. And I'm the executive director of Pierce County Grassroots Organizing. Good to see you again. Great, thank you. Um, Judy. Um, I'm Judy Ferber. I uh, live in Menominee. Um, I went to a, a ranked choice voting uh, dinner on Tuesday evening. And when I saw the um, invitation to join the meeting and um, getting information on how you're going to spread the message, I decided I should jump on. So thank you. Thank you. That must have been Ellen's um, house party. Ellen. Yeah, wonderful desserts. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, great. I wish I could have been there. I would have I would have probably eaten all the desserts, though. So it's probably good that I wasn't there. Um, 22 of us. And, and if I could say one more thing, my yep. oldest daughter lives in Anchorage. And so I, when I got the message last evening that, you know, their ranked choice voting um, had netted a uh, native woman that we're so excited about uh, for a short uh, four month stint. That's, uh, you know, was also just really encouraging what you're doing. Yep, thank you. Um, and yeah, we'll touch on that a little bit since that is definitely relevant news that came in yesterday. Um, thank you. Uh, Linda? I'm Linda Vipotis today. I live in River Falls, Wisconsin, and I live in St. Croix County. And I'm a volunteer with um, Bridge the Divide and PC Grow. Thank you. Good to see you, Linda. Um, Maureen? Uh, I'm Maureen Ash. I live just south of River Falls. And I'm on the board of PC Grow and um, a volunteer for Bridge the Divide. Thank you. Um, Cheryl? Uh, my name, oh, wait, am I? No, I should be OK. Can you hear me? Yep, you're yeah. good. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Cheryl Maplethorpe. I live in River Falls. Uh, I belong to a lot of organizations, and this is one of them. Yes, great. Thank you for being here. Um, Lynn? Yeah, hi. Um, I uh, live east of River Falls, but I came to um, one of your meetings at Glen Park. It was great. Uh, and I have talked to other people about this, um, you know, because I, I think it's a great thing to get both both parties involved in. And uh, like was already said, Alaska approved it this week. So, yeah. Yeah. And it was great to see. And um, yeah, Wisconsin, as well as many other states are, are trying. So. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. 
Um, Anne? Uh, hi, Ann Leak, River Falls. I think I've worked with everybody on the Zoom call in the last couple of years. So happy to see everybody back uh, for this effort. Yes, thank you. Um, and then Rich and Lena. Hey, everybody. It's Rich and Lena Eng. Uh, thank you for having us here. We've always been fans of uh, the work that PC Grow has done. We work with many of you on nonpartisan redistricting, redistricting efforts and look forward to working with you on other initi initiatives like Final Five voting to save our democracy. We live in New Berlin, uh, which is in the heart of Waukesha County here, just outside of Milwaukee. Okay, great. Thank you for being here. Great. Thank you for um, and Pat, we are um, just doing a round of introductions. Do you want to introduce yourself quick? Sure. Uh, let me... Uh... Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been involved with uh, Pierce County Grow for uh, three years now, and I got started uh, when they had issues with uh, voting and uh, also with uh, other uh, concerns of mine, which includes the environment, and also uh, the current issue we have right now, which of course is uh, trying to promote uh, a ranked choice voting and final five by voting. Uh, so that's my involvement right now. So I want to uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to participate in this meeting. Yes, thank you. It's great to have you again. Um, so yeah, I will, in case um, some of you joined late, later than I uh, put this in there, I'm going to put the agenda in here again um, so you can see it. And then I am going to Share my screen quick, show you a little quick overview of what we're um, doing today. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, this is the Bridge Divide monthly meeting where we come together to build the local movement for final five voting in Wisconsin. Um, and this is our agenda that I just put in chat a little bit ago. So um, we're in the introduction phase right now and then I'm gonna hand it off to Janelle um, for a special announcement. And then we're gonna do a quick campaign review um, and look at what we got done in August in the last month. And then I'll give you guys a quick house party team update, um, letting you know how our last few weeks of hosting house parties have been. And then Rich and Lena Eng from Voters First Wisconsin will be speaking and we'll have some time set aside for them for questions. Um, and then at the very end there, we'll just um, wrap up. So that's what we've got in store today. Um, I think I'm actually going to hand it off to Janelle now um, and let her give her special announcement. Okay. Well, thank you, Danny, for giving me time. And it's really a pleasure to be with all of you here. I, I know all of you, so <laughs> it's um, really special. Um, to get to be um, in a Zoom again with you after after a while. So um, I'm here tonight in part to be in the meeting, but also to give you a little sneak preview of a change that's coming um, to our organization. And so uh, you guys are on the inside, you're part of the organization, so I want you to hear it first. Uh, so as many of you heard, a lot of us aren't even living in Pierce County, right? We have people from Dunn County. We have a house party happening in Dunn County right now. Um, we have people come calling in from Polk. So um, it's time for us to update our name to reflect exactly what we're doing. And so people outside of Pierce County don't feel like there's some kind of incongruity. Are you organizing peace in Pierce County or not? So we're aligning the work that we're actually doing with our name. And so on September 20th, our name will change. And instead of being Pierce County Grassroots Organizing, will be Grassroots Organizing Western Wisconsin, which we can abbreviate to GROW. And then we'll have um, Grassroots Organizing Western Wisconsin Action, which will be abbreviated to GROW Action. And you probably don't know this because we just go by PC GROW right now, but behind the scenes, we have two organizations because we have two different kinds of 
of money that we can use to power our work. And so that has been kind of behind the scenes up till now, but right now we're gonna make it visible to everyone. And so Bridge the Divide is actually gonna fall under the, the organization of uh, Grow Action. And I'll explain that a little bit more. So um, we're gonna have, they're called two affiliated organizations. We'll have Grow and Grow Action. And GROW will be to do purely charitable work. It's, it's a 501c3, like the League of Women Voters, um, like probably a lot of the environmental organizations that you're part of or things like that. Um, it, but 501c3s and GROW will have limited ability to influence elections, but donations to that organization are tax deductible. GROW Action is a, what's called a social welfare organization. Um, it operates with 501c4 money. And so Grow Action can do everything that Grow does, plus it can have an impact in influencing elections. So that gives us a lot more tools in our toolbox to do that work that we're doing with um, Bridge the Divide. And so that's why Bridge the Divide will be under Grow Action. But other projects that we have, for example, Conversations That Connect, where we're doing deep canvassing in the community, that'll be under Grow. Um, so you'll see two affiliated organizations starting on September 20th. And what's the benefit? The benefit with affiliated organizations is that you can share a lot of things. So for one, you can share people. <laughs> so I'll work for both organizations. Bill will work for both organizations. Danny mostly will work for Grow Action, but sometimes he may work for Grow as well. Um, and then there's other benefits like sharing email addresses and, and things like that. So you may be wondering, what does Western Wisconsin mean? <laughs> and our board is deciding that before September 20th, they have promised. So um, by the time we make our announcement on September 20th, we can really clearly state what it is. Um, but it'll be the counties that we've been working in for fair maps and now bridge the divide. So it won't it won't be a big surprise, I don't think. Unless our board goes really wild, just keep Marine in check there. <laughs> So I just really want to go super quickly where we've been um, because some of you have come into the work at different times and so I'll just one minute over you. Uh, seven people in Pierce County came together in 2019 decided it's they they wanted to create power and make change in Pierce County. They attended a wild training which is an organizing training in Milwaukee and so some of those people you can see in the picture here including Marine, you can kind of see Marine there. Um, and another fun little tidbit when I was looking through the photos is that Bill was there. He wasn't with our organization, but he was one of the trainers. And it's too bad he's not here tonight because I wanted him to tell us about his fancy haircut he had back then. <laughs> um, in 2020, we launched the Fair Maps Project and it's kind of fun to see Carolyn and other people in here. Um, and so even in 2020, we were already working beyond Pierce County. In 2021, we launched Expanding Broadband. We continued the Fair Maps work. We had some ice cream socials where we reached out to the community and just asked, what's important to you? Um, and in 2022, we've launched Roadside Revival Project, the conversations that connect that does deep um, canvassing in the community to learn what the issues that our neighbors are facing. And of course, we launched Bridge the Divide, uh, which is all of us. So where we're going in January, we're going to offer an organizing school because we know that together we have power, but we can use it very strategically um, to be sure that we're really creating as much change as possible. So we want to create you know, grow all of us as leaders and be strategic about the way that we are using our power to create great change for our communities, our state, and ultimately the world. In 2023, we'll be launching new projects. These, just like the ones that we already have, will really be rooted in the community. What all of you and your neighbors and the people in Western Wisconsin tell us is most important to them. And we want to build, continue to build projects around what we're hearing is most important to people in the community. And building power requires two ingredients. One is organizing people, and we're doing that here tonight, and we're doing that at house parties, and you'll hear a lot about that. But it's also organizing money. 
and money pays for Danny, pays for me, pays for Bill, pays for renting event spaces and printing literature. And so really um, to build our power, we need to, we need to be paying attention to both of those things. And so we're gonna invite all of you to donate any time, but on September 20th, when we officially launch our new name, um, we'll be launching a campaign to raise $5,000 from people in our community. So I invite you to consider uh, whether you'd like to also make a financial donation on, on top of all of the great energy and um, yeah, thought that you've been putting into the projects. So I spoke really quickly because I only had 10 minutes and I wanted to have time for questions. So any questions, thoughts, comments? How does this feel? Exciting. You know, I actually feel good about that, you know, broadening your scope to include other counties besides Pierce County, because I think that the more we uh, counties get involved, the more power we have, you know, you know, there's always power in numbers, so I like that. Thanks, Douglas and Pat, appreciate the feedback. You know, it's Carolyn. Um, it's very exciting to me to think that we're becoming uh, an organization that owns the reality that we are working in Western Wisconsin. Because from a League of Women Voters perspective, that was a huge challenge when we were doing fair maps because we cover Burnett and Polk and St. Croix. And you came up to St. Croix, but not really farther than that, you know. And when we did have um, the one event, well, two events in Polk County, they were so well supported by league members because they were excited that you were reaching beyond their understanding of Pierce County. So I think that's a plus. The other thing that I would request is, I don't know how you're going to launch this and what your plans are for that, but um, if you're writing articles, could you potentially um, even try to get something in the Burnett County Sentinel. I know you're probably not going to reach that far, but we're involved with you and we reach into Burnett County and they're a sister newspaper to the Amory Free Press and the Osceola Sun. So it's real easy to just cover the three county area because I think the, the league people who are up there need to receive that word from you, not necessarily just from us. It's very exciting. This is very exciting. Thank you, Carolyn. That'll be super easy. We will we will have a press release, so we'll be sure to include um, the Burnett County Sentinel. Thank you. Great idea. And thanks for your perspective. And uh, I want to say, Janelle, that uh, Pierce County Grow has recently hired excellent people to lead the groups. So I'm so happy about the organizers and the social media uh, people, uh, people that are working on the different campaigns, really wonderful people to work with and uh, just great so far, really supporting the, the organization very well. Thank you, Anne. I, I feel really lucky to be on such a, a great team. <laughs> really, really glad to have Danny. Yeah. Yes, I'm grateful too to be on a great team. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> I saw um, Doug had a question um, in chat. Can we follow a snowflake model with leaders in each of the counties that the board decides will be included? Um, okay, so I like, yes, snowflake, yes, absolutely. We always want snowflakes and organizing. Um, leaders at each counties that the board decides. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, you know, we, so that's a really great question. Um, even though we've been around for a couple of years, we're still like a startup organization. There's still a lot of things that we haven't fully figured out. One of the ideas that has been kicked around a lot is like chapters or counties, you know, mini county. Like what if there was a Pierce County grassroots organizing and a St. Croix County and a Dunn County and we all were like part of Western Wisconsin. Um, so the reality is the long range planning committee right now um, has made, has a tentative goal that needs to go to the full board, but 
we we want to create a very democratic structure. We really want we don't want this to be a top to bottom. We really want it to be like the community is dictating everything that's happening. People that are involved, you know, it's from the ground up. It's very very democratic. Um, but we don't have that quite yet. We have a board that's um, that's not elected at this point. Like we have, but we have to do some of this just to make things happen. Um, but the board is aware of that. And in the next two years, one of their goals is to figure out a structure that is really democratic. Um, and that really creates that decentralized power and ability to create change. And so I think just as this is a big step right now, in the next two years, we're going to have other big steps of big change. Um, so know that that's a priority in the next two years to figure out what exactly our structure is going to be and how can we have the most impact. Also, the board's looking for recruits, FYI. <laughs> and it, may, it may not end up to be um, by county, it may be by legislative district or... Absolutely. So yeah. there's lots, lots of excitement for me. Thank you. Well. Danny, I don't want to, I, I feel like I'm spilling over a little bit here, so. Um, You're okay. A final question or comment? No? Well, thank you all very much for your time. And for those of you who've been in meetings with me, you know that I love a chant. <laughs> so you're not getting away with having me in the meeting without having a chant. So I invite all of you to take yourselves off of mute. We're going to do one chant and then we're going to channel all of our energy back into Danny so he can take it from there. So we know that together we have the power to create change. So I'm going to count to three and on three, let's all say together, we have the power. Okay. So here we go. One, two, three. We, we have, have power. power. Awesome. Thanks. Pass it back to Danny. Thank you, Janelle. Um, very exciting news. And um, yeah, I will get us into um, the campaign review section um, of our meeting here. So, um, so in case you haven't been to a Bridge to Divide meeting recently or at all, um, our strategic goal is to build relationships, promote civic engagement, and organize residents to demand that legislators pass final five voting in the Wisconsin legislature in 2023 in order to reduce extreme partisanship and divisiveness in politics. And um, this is especially timely since, um, as was mentioned earlier, with Alaska having just had a final four election, um, we are also, you know, Wisconsin is trying to do the same thing except with one more um, person in the general election um, and pass final five voting. Um, and we'll see in Alaska again, they'll have another general election um, in November since this August election was a special election. And um, I think so far we've seen that um, final four voting can, final four voting or final five voting in all the different iterations we've seen it can really work to change the incentives of um, the people running for office to make everyone accountable to all of their constituents, as well as, you know, reducing extreme partisanship and divisiveness. So here's our geographic scope. Um, it is assembly districts 28, 29, 30, and 93. And that includes Pierce County, St. Croix County, Dunn County, Polk County, Eau Claire County, Pepin County. So that is our geographic scope for this Bridge to Divide campaign. And then here is our campaign timeline that we are looking at. So in June, we had a kickoff event and um, we are sort of in this middle section here, um, the summer to fall section, where we are actively pursuing house parties, candidate engagement, as well as community events with house parties and community events really being um, the main tactics we're pursuing at this time in order to educate people on how final five voting works and get people um, invested to the extent that they will eventually um, participate in our climax tactic of legislative action um, with yeah the ultimate goal being that we will have something like a phone bank to um, put pressure on legislators if it seems like Final five voting is in danger of 
not passing or not having a vote on it. And um, the ultimate goal is to pass final five voting in Wisconsin next year in the next legislative session. So any questions so far? Um, that's the quick campaign overview. I'm gonna get into what we did in August next, but does anyone have any questions thus far? Okay, good. All right. Um, so yeah, our big project in August was the Pierce County Fair. Um, and we considered it a great success. We spoke to more than 250 people about final five voting. Um, more than 40 people wanted to learn more and 15 of those 40 wanted to attend house parties and we got a few house party hosts out of it as well. Um, the number one thing we you know, found was really useful at the Pierce County Fair as well as River Falls Days, which we were at in July, um, was having Starburst laid out on our table and kids would come up and um, they'd want free Starburst, of course. So they would, um, we would have them rank their Starburst you know, uh, flavors uh, fifth through first, fifth being least favorite, first being um, their favorite. So, um, and then that was a good way to get um, parents to come over with their kids and we'd give the whole spiel to their parents. Um, so yeah, for house parties, we um, recently had a house party at Windows as well as Ellen Oaks and Nina Cokes is tonight. So Bob and Bill are currently at Nina's um, and talking to people about final five voting. And Ellen's was just earlier this week on Tuesday. Um, and from what I understand, they were very successful. Sounds like they had some great dessert at Ellen's. Um, so I'm jealous that I couldn't be there, but it's okay. Um, and then upcoming house parties, uh, we have one at Diane Wangelski's, Brian Furlong, and Aaron Tomlinson. Brian Furlong, we uh, touch base with at the fair, um, got in contact with him there. And um, these other ones, Aaron Tomlinson has been involved with us in the past, and Diane um, recently got involved with Bridge of the Divide and is very enthusiastic. So these ones are on the calendar. Um, and as well as we are talking um, to many more people to get finalized dates for other house parties. But if you are interested in coming to a house party at all, um, get in touch and I will for sure send you the dates. Carolyn, I'll make sure to send you. Yeah, I date. wanted to just make a comment so oh, yeah. that you don't need to send me anything, but the League of Women Voters St. Croix Valley is planning two kind of house parties, but they're not in houses. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, we're uh, this the week after uh, the Wednesday, I guess, after Labor Day, and then the following Tuesday, we're having two of these gatherings, um, one at the St. Croix Falls Library and one at the Hudson Library. So I offer that because there may be people out there that would want to host something but are hesitant to have people in their homes my house you could have three people maybe because it's a little 650 square foot house but uh to move it to a public place that has privacy in the venue makes some sense as well you know so i just wanted to offer that as a a possible alternative but not to preempt what you're you've been doing because these pictures are wonderful but i know up here uh, the idea of doing it in a more public place with a private room was more appealing. Yep. Yeah. And that's a great point to raise because we are more than open to having um, events at public places. I know Diane Wangelski's will be at um, the table on Main in River Falls. Um, so if, yeah, if you don't have or don't want to have people in your house, um, we can always work something out to have it in a different location. Um, and touching on what's coming up, uh, just as Carolyn just mentioned, we'll be having two events on the 7th and the 13th with the St. Croix Valley League, um, which will be similar to house parties. We'll be ranking events there and having a couple speakers, um, Bob, Josh Wilson from Veterans for Political Innovation um, and Bill, and um, we will be at a PEO sisterhood meeting on September 14th. 
um, also giving a presentation on final five voting. And then Danny, um, what, what does PEO sisterhood mean? Um, let me look it up. It was a, it's something similar to. I, I can talk. I'm a member, but not yep. of that. Chapter. There you go. <laughs> it's a philanthropic organization. Yep. Uh, they raise funds for um, 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 women's education. We have projects and we raise funds for grants and scholarships. Um, international students, high school graduates that are going to college, et cetera. We also own a college in Nevada, Missouri. It's called Cotty College. And so it's sisterhood because it's by invitation only, much like any of the service organizations uh, like Masons or uh, Eastern Star or something like that. So PEO is Philanthropic Education Organization. They're headquartered out of Iowa and they serve throughout the United States and Canada. Yes, thank you, Carolyn. Um, and yeah, we're very excited to be um, speaking there and getting involved there. Um, and then, yeah, this last thing um, on my list is we are having a final five meetup with multiple organizations, including Voters First Wisconsin, Democracy Found, Veterans for Political Innovation, um, to meet up with the different organizations in Clover, Wisconsin, which is right outside of Stevens Point. Um, so sort of a central location in the state on September 24th. And Rich and Lena will be talking about that today as well as many other things. Um, so I am going to hand it off to them here. Um, does anyone have any questions at all uh, for the time being? All right, Rich and Lena, you can take it away. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Excellent, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, well, thank you guys for having us. I mean, that's just phenomenal news. Lena and I are super excited to hear about you growing from PC Grow to Grow. I think that's awesome. You guys do tremendous work and we're very uh, just excited to, to see you uh, continue on your journey on such great causes. You, you know, we're on our own journey here. Uh, so we're gonna share with you about uh, Final Five voting. Uh, we, we believe that Sarah Eskridge had come and talked to you earlier about Final Five voting. So we're not gonna talk so much about it as to how we're thinking about the strategy here uh, during our, our presentation. So a little bit about voters first, uh, in terms of vision, mission, and values, you know, we believe strongly that if you have good candidates, you can get good governance. If you get good governance, you can bring a good society. That's kind of what we want to see happen. And our role that we want to play in is uh, our mission is to help fix our broken political system. Really through kind of two ends, we want to end the corruption, not necessarily the illegal corruption, but the corruption in the system. And then on a positive front, we want to encourage and elect uniters. Too much division in this country, we all know that. Got to find people who can unite it. The values that we have, you know, really foundational would be common sense to find common ground, to solve common problems. We believe that truth matters and character counts. And as you can see on our little logo, it's country over party. And every discussion we have, we always preface it with the ABCs of political discourse, which is always be courteous. And that works well for us. But when you look at our country's divide, we, you know, the way we see things through our lens is that there's a few pillars that need to happen in order to change the divisiveness within our country. The first thing that we have to do is to change individual hearts. You need to love your neighbor, not hate them, like uh, we see today. We think uh, another key pillar is looking at the effect of media. Now, this is not just traditional media, but also social media that's come up something needs to happen in terms of uh, how that, uh, that affects us and what media is produced and how it's consumed. And really a third pillar is, hey, there are some structural elements that need to change. If we can have some innovative political systems that can work around those structures and, and right the ship, so to speak, we can do well and we can do better. And that's what Voters First is focused on is primarily on uh, this, this pillar here. We'll talk a little bit about this pillar at the end. But within this pillar, we have four initiatives that we care about. First one is money and politics. Second one is on voter access and election security and integrity. 
Third one, which we've worked with uh, many of you on before, is on nonpartisan redistricting. And finally, uh, tonight's topic is final five voting. And the neat thing about final five voting, we believe, is that it can be the catalyst for our other initiatives, meaning that if we can uh, be successful in implementing final five voting, that can help uh, the other initiatives, uh, the ones that uh, we have listed on the page, as well as many of the ones you, you guys shared before earlier, uh, it can help those happen as well. So for those who may not have heard of five, Final Five voting, just a quick rundown on, on, on what it is. Uh, Final Five voting quite simply is the combination of two things, a top five primary election and an instant runoff general election. This uh, top five primary, it's a nonpartisan primary. So all parties uh, get together and people can vote for all parties on the same ballot. Voters get to choose a single candidate. So they're voting like they do today with our first past the post voting. And uh, in the primary, you don't have to win a majority. You just have to win a plurality. And that's it's not as important to win the majority there because we're going to advance the top five voters to the general election. Not a single person, but the top five vote getters. Now, in the general election, we're going to use instant runoff voting uh, to determine the ultimate winner. You guys are familiar with that. You did that with your Starburst with the kids. I think that's a great idea, by the way. And that is the summary of Final Five voting. The benefits that we believe uh, uh, we should see are that it'll help our politicians become more solutions uh, oriented. We believe more civil campaigns uh, will be run because of Final Five voting. And ultimately, we'll get better representation from our candidates because they have to appeal to a broader electorate. Don't know if some of you watched what happened in Alaska with the special election on Final Four, but already uh, we, we saw a more civil campaign happen there, even with uh, a firebrand like Sarah Palin, who was actually more, more civil. So can't judge everything on one special election, but thought it was an interesting uh, tell so far, and we're encouraged by that. Uh, one thing to note is that we're focused on federal offices first and state level positions will follow in future years. Now, Wisconsin, as maybe you know, is not a ballot measure state. And we, we can't have citizen initiated ballot measures. So our only option to pass Final Five voting is to work with our legislators and have them work uh, to pass the bill. Now, one thing to point out is that in addition to directly passing a bill, legislators, not citizens, but legislators can initiate ballot measures in Wisconsin. So keep this in the back of your head. We're going to talk about it at the end of our presentation today. Now, if you look at the Wisconsin state legislature, you can kind of see the numbers here. And we are heavily one party in Wisconsin, right? I think you all know that Republicans, they, they control the uh, Senate by a wide margin. And in the assembly, they have almost close to a supermajority. So, you know, right or wrong, uh, you know, we know that Wisconsin is one of the most gerrymandered states in the country. But it is what it is, and any legislation that we want must pass through uh, the Republicans. And so we have to work with them, and we're not going to fight gravity. We're going to find a way to work with uh, our Republican brothers and sisters to pass this. And the way we'll do that uh, is to understand. Okay, can you guys hear me still? It's All right, I'll keep going. It's kind of muddy. Yeah, let me see if I move this a little closer here. Uh, but if you look at the key moments in the life of a bill, there's really five key times where legislators have to take action, or at least a portion of legislators have to take action. And so I won't uh, mention all of them. You can kind of read this on the chart here. Uh, but these moments of key action are when we want to make sure that uh, we, we get involved and send a message to our legislators. And the legislators are not the, even though they're the pivotal people that make the final decision, there are others involved in this whole system of influence in passing you know, the final five voting bills. And you can see the four groups here. We have the grass tops, the influencers, the legislators, and the grassroots. Voters First Wisconsin plays primarily with these uh, two branches of the influencers, the legislators and the grassroots. But our friends at Democracy Found, uh, they play here with the legislators and the grass tops. 
And then at the right time, we'll figure out how to work with the influencers as we get closer to, uh, to passing uh, the, the bills here. Um, so when you look at net-net, we've got 132 legislators that we've got to consider here and about 5.9 million Wisconsinites that you know, have some uh, say in what happens with the bill. So given that we're a small team and we've got limited resources, you know, do we need to go after every legislator and every Wisconsinite? You know, obviously that's not really possible. And the good answer is no, it's not. And this is the heart of what we wanted to share with Unite is how we prioritize uh, the districts that we're targeting to, to winnow that those big numbers down of 132 and 5.9 million down to a reasonable number. And the way we're prioritizing the districts that we're uh, focusing on is really through uh, these categorizations. If you look at our legislators, you can see that uh, where they fall uh, in kind of these, these groupings. Some are party leaders, like Speaker Voss would certainly be a party leader. You've got uh, committee chairs like Kathy Rainier as an election chair of the election, uh, chair of the elections committee. People serve as committee members. Uh, Joe Sanfilippo, our representative, is a committee member. Uh, people who co-sponsored the bill, right? So Senator Dale Kuyenga and Danny Reamer were co-sponsors of the bill. And then people who in the past who supported prior uh, democracy reforms, uh, maybe they supported uh, gerrymandering uh, or gerrymandering legislation. They would all be people that we could uh, would consider that help make a district a, a priority. And if we were to just kind of play this out in the Senate, you can do the same thing in the assembly, but we'll just use the Senate here for illustrative purposes. You can uh, go through those five prior priorities and kind of pick out who are all the, the people, all the senators that uh, are folks that we're going to pay special attention to and focus on during this campaign. Uh, we've listed these nine senators here that fit the uh, fit the description of the five priorities. And if you look at their distribution across the state, you can kind of see what it is here. That's another reason why we're just super excited that you guys are expanding to all of Western Wisconsin, because as you can see, there's a lot of work that needs to happen here. And we are just uh, honored and uh, inspired to see that you guys will be able to continue to you know, carry the torch and talk to uh, the future uh, political leaders here. So that was the Senate. We could do the same for the uh, assembly and note that we're gonna change this once we, once the elections in November happen. So we see who's actually running those positions and then we'll redo the map, but the concept still holds. So what is our hypothesis for change at Voters First? Well, when we look at the history of what's happened before, whether you've worked on uh, gerrymandering or you've worked on uh, Citizens United, there have been things like signature campaigns or uh, county resolutions or county referenda that have been tried in the past. What we're gonna to try to do differently uh, with Final Five voting is direct legislative contact through key primary voter constituents. So really we think it's important to have the right message, the right messenger at the right moment. We talked about some of the right moments before. We know the message about Final Five voting is right. And just having the right messengers to talk to legislators, I think that's a one, two, three punch that is actually pretty powerful. The ideal people to contact legislators would be voters or donors of the same party or people who are new to the legislator. They've never really met, they don't know them, but they're actually speaking up. That's always something that uh, uh, inspires action from our political uh, electorate. And the reason why we're thinking or we're forming this hypothesis for change really comes from a, a few different places. So first of all, as we've cultivated a relationship with our representatives, uh, so Joe Sanfilippo in 8015, he gave us direct guidance. You know, he was originally not a fan of Final Five voting, but then after Lena in particular spent some time talking with them and we introduced him to the book, uh, The Politics Industry, uh, he changed his mind and said, hey, this is great. If you guys really wanna be able to do this though, you've got to, get multiple people to be able to uh, contact you know, the different uh, representatives at the right moment. And he said that makes a difference. And ditto from John Pudner. Some of you may know John. He's the leader of Take Back Our Republic. He said, particularly for Republicans, that's the, you know, that's the, the same dynamic that uh, Joe Sanfilippo 
mentioned to us. And this is that dynamic. Joe mentioned that if he even gets 20 calls on any one particular issue, that, that's an anomaly. If he got 20 calls a day from people he didn't know that were all speaking about the same thing and asking him to take action, he would immediately be picking up the phone to Speaker Voss and saying, hey, you gotta let me take some action on this. This is really heating up and this is something that we gotta, uh, we gotta make a decision on. And that's the type of you know, fire that we want to light under our politicians as a basis to persuade them in the power of Final Five voting. So that's our hypothesis here. And when you look at uh, you know, everything that we said about this hypothesis, it takes the 132 legislators and 5.9 million voters in Wisconsin down to about really 2,800 Wisconsinites and uh, nine senators and 19 assembly reps, right? So the key here is forging 100 key people, you know, so 20 key people in each district for five days a week, that's 100. If we can get people that commit to make a call to their legislator in each of these nine Senate districts and 19 assembly districts, then that can uh, be a powerful force for change. And that's what we're working to. So how do we find these, you know, approximately 2,800 Wisconsinites? And we submit to you that we'll take a three-pronged approach to do this. Number one, we're gonna work with the county political parties to try to uh, help them believe in the power of final five voting. Uh, recently, we were able to work with the Oconto Republican Party to actually hand out our final five voting flyer at their county fair. And ditto, we're trying in other counties as well, similar initiatives. Uh, the second uh, prong that we're looking at is how do we work with local and influential organizations to be able to share with them and have them reach out to their groups and their members and talk about final five voting. It's nice to see some representation from League of Women Voters. They're, they're great, they've got a large reach, but there are other groups, uh, some are more conservative leaning than others, like the Chamber of Commerce, Wisconsin Manufacturers or Realtors Association, and be able to have them reach out to their groups. We had a great meeting with uh, Leader Ethics. Some of you may know that organization. We spoke out at UW La Crosse. It was a great event and we're happy that that yielded some fruit. Then of course, uh, the main campaign for us is on house parties and individual conversations, <clears throat> very similar to what Danny shared earlier. But if people can experience Final Five voting on a personal level, much like you had those kids, you know, taste Starburst. We have people taste uh, taste food and all sorts of things, whether it be pizza or pies or beer or meat or whatever, uh, it becomes very tangible and meaningful to them. And almost everybody gets on board. Sad thing is I get a little fatter. I put on quite a bit of weight since we've had uh, these parties, but it's all for a good cause, what I keep telling Lena. I won't go over the, uh, the dynamics of a house party. It seems like you guys are running many, so you know the benefits of those as well. Uh, we love them and we want to continue to grow them and accelerate them and, and scale them uh, because they will be meaningful. So we've done about 26 house parties now. Some of the numbers that, you know, that we're seeing in terms of response, you guys would be curious to what you see as well, but we get anywhere from eight to 12 people on average, sometimes as high as 20, uh, but almost everybody's willing to get on the email list. A lot of people are willing to either do something as a volunteer or donate after a house party, you know, 80% plus response there. And we think that you should be able to expect about one to three people uh, who are willing to help host a house party after this to keep the, the movement going. And with just a few people from the statewide, from our statewide team, we can help a host be able to run an effective party so that all they have to worry about is taking care of the guests, we run the whole show, and it makes it as easy as possible for them. We put a link in this presentation so you can see our uh, YouTube video of how, how we do house party if you're interested, uh, but we have a lot of fun doing them. All right, so last slide on, on this subject. This is how we see the timeline going on for uh, Final Five voting now over the next few years. Uh, I won't read everything here, but really 2022 is let's continue to build and then we'll adjust kind of after the November elections and see uh, where the who, who the elected candidates are. Uh, big thing here is our September 24th meeting, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but 2023, is you know we got to really think hard about how, what is the the best path forward. We all want to pass final five voting in 2023 right now, but what we hear from the legislative sponsors is that this is a difficult task. The Republican leadership right now a little bit concerned. 
So their best bet on the past, uh, path forward, if we can't do direct passage in 2023, is for the legislatures to vote on a creating a ballot measure, which all the citizens of Wisconsin would vote on in 2024, right? So we have to be prepared for both of these uh, options, if you will, both of these paths, depending on what uh, our legislative sponsors for Final Five voting tell us. If we can go the direct passage route, that's obviously preferred. Uh, but if not, we will have to gear up and be prepared to now run a ballot measure. This has not been done for 20 years, but that's what we would do. It's initiated by the legislator, not the citizens. But we would have to then in 2024 find a way to get all the voters in Wisconsin, at least 50 percent plus one, <laughs> to uh, to support it and, and pass. And that would be something that we'll continue to look at in 2023 to see if this is where we're heading or not. But that's how we see uh, the, the future timeline here. And at this point, I'm going to make a plug for our meeting on the 24th. We would love to have as many folks from Bridge the Divide and Grow uh, to come and attend. Uh, it's gonna be at Stevens Point. Stevens Point uh, is right smack dab in the middle of our state. You can see it right there. We're actually in the town of Plover, a little bit outside of there. It's just a day meeting. We're running from 9.30 to three o'clock. So we're trying to persuade a lot of our Milwaukee and Madison and Fox Valley folks to just kind of migrate towards the, the center of the state. For the Milwaukee folks, it's gonna be about a two and a half, uh, three hour drive. They'll have to drive the, the longest, but we really wanted to have it in the center of the state to uh, attract as many people as possible. Since you represent the, the Western part of the state, if you guys could bring many people from the West side, that would be wonderful. You can hear from some, from some great speakers. Uh, there's going to be uh, like four different workshops that we have. Bill Hogseth is actually going to be uh, leading one. And yes, there still is such a thing as a free lunch. We are offering a free lunch to all the folks who are, are coming here through the generosity of uh, one of our sponsors. But we think it'll be a great time to connect, meet other folks who share the passion for uh, reclaiming our democracy. And we invite you all to come to that. And I'm going to kind of pause it right here now. This is kind of our final slide. I did have more information, Danny, on our uh, red, white, and blue dialogue dinners, which are a little bit complementary to your uh, uh, citizen conversations or community conversations. But since I'm at uh, 20 minutes now, I'm going to pause and just to be respectful of time. Yes, thank you. Uh, that was very good, very informative presentation and um, Lena just dropped the form in the chat to register if you would like to go to the September 24th meeting. If you have any issues um, with having a ride or you would like to carpool since we'll all be coming from similar areas, um, we will certainly uh, figure out carpooling. Um, so wrong link she says she'll has the she'll have the new one in there. Uh, just a little bit. But um, yeah, thank you, Rich. Um, let's open the floor for questions. Um, any questions for Rich or Lena? Uh, well, I have a question, Rich. Um, hey, Ann. You mentioned when, when the time comes to make phone calls, uh, we really want to find um, constituents uh, who uh, are, well, are not, you said, typical complainers to the legislators. Uh, so I'm pretty much a typical complainer to, to my <laughs> legislators. So does it really benefit um, me uh, and our effort for people like me not to contact my legislators at all about Final Five voting because uh, I'm, I'm connected in other ways uh, negatively with them? Yeah, that's a great question, Anne. So yeah. I think it's going to have to be kind of on a case by case basis, but that was the specific language that Joe uh, gave to us. So in, in our area, there's people who just constantly come to him and he gets kind of tired of them. Again, I'm not saying that you are. I've had a wonderful time working with, with you. You've done a great job and in, in serving us. But, you know, you're going to have to look at your your group of people. If in your district, you've got 100 and maybe five of you guys are like uh, fit that category of complainer, then maybe, you know, that's not 
they're not going to be leading the way, but they can certainly like leave a message or send a postcard or whatever. Uh, but they, you probably wouldn't want to make them tip of the spear. Yeah. Okay. Right. But certainly, certainly we don't want people to feel like, oh, they can't, they can't do anything either. Just make sure they're balanced or overbalanced by new people that, that talk about this. So it evokes the right response, right? We want our legislators to be responsive, not to shake their heads. I mean, the people yeah, and even in, a, in an ideal world, um, people that the legislators know and like and, you know, have a trusted relationship with. Uh, yeah, Doug? I was just going to say that, that the group of people that, that you just referred to, and they, they're great for like bringing in folks who have never done it before, kind of intimidated, and, and just showing them that it is fun, can be really enjoyable, doesn't have to be a, a really difficult task. It can, especially if you go, you know, with more than one person. Yes, for great sure. Point, Doug. Just a comment on that. Um, it is true. Many people have never talked to their legislators. They're a little intimidated. And so in our house parties, we actually show them how simple a script they can use, um, including maybe a personal reason why they like Final Five voting, and that they can call them after hours so they don't even have to talk to someone. They can just leave a message and then it'll be recorded. And that seems to give people a lot more relief that they don't have to try to answer questions about final five voting to, you know, to somebody on the other end of the line. Yep, excellent point, honey. Yeah, I'm gonna write that one down. Since that's, that's a good thing to bring up. And some sort of piece of paper you could leave with them that summarizes it in bullets. Yeah, um, yeah, I can certainly um, give some legislative action, just um, summary in like the follow up email. Yeah, we have a one page PowerPoint we just flashed here. Here's, these are the sentences you can say. Here's pick one of these for your personal thing. And that's all you need to say is like one page on the PowerPoint. Yeah, that'd be great. Any more questions come to mind for people? All right, looks like um, don't have any more questions. So I will once again invite all of you to um, click on that Google form if you're interested in coming to the um, Final Five meetup in um, Clover outside of Stevens Point later this month. Um, we love to have you there and um, you'll get a free lunch, so it'll be worth it. Um, yeah, I suppose, um, I don't know if I have any closing comments today, um, but Rich and Lena, it's been great to have you too. And yes, as Lena says, um, I would love to meet you all in person over if you were able to come. So um, certainly fill out that form if you're interested. So yeah, it's been good having everyone today. Um, thank you to Rich and Lena. Thank you to Janelle for um, sharing with us um, the news about us turning into GROW, grassroots organizing of Western Wisconsin. And um, we will be in touch afterwards with a follow-up email. All right, great. Nice to meet everybody. Thanks for having us. Have a great we'll have night, a good everyone. Night. Good night. Congrats again. So long. Bye now. Hey, stay cool. Bye. Thank you.